Razor, and welcome back to the studio. And we're joined in the studio today with independent councillor Davy Highland. Davy, well, Razor. Razor, how you doing? Keeping here, well. It's warm in here, Davy. We'll, we'll get rid of that for a start. Look at that. I'm lethal That's with that, aren't I? You should throw darts with that. I could, I could. <laughs> <laughs> have to get uh, Mickey Cunningham in for the dart league now. Uh, Davy, thanks for coming in. It's a busy time of the year for you. Uh, yeah. You know the the election campaign going and that, and, and I suppose your election here and meeting people. You have a lot to do, yeah. and um, and you know, thanks for coming in. So no, I really appreciate it. You know, I was in before we and I enjoyed the, the the banter and I enjoy also the fact that you, you can get your ideas across. There is an audience out there, uh, maybe listening to you. Maybe they don't take it too seriously. I yeah. don't think you should, but at least uh, we're local politicians. We're trying to represent the people of Newry. Um, we're trying to express ourselves and to give our views. Yeah. Now, can I ask you, Davy, that, that the whole geography for councillors has changed. Mm. Has your area changed? Yeah, fairly radically. Um, I have always represented Newry, and I also represent Newry and Armagh in, in the, the assembly elections, but. The big change in Newry this time is that there's additional estates being added on, the likes of the Rain Road, the likes of uh, the Warren Point Road. But above all else, uh, there's a new ward called Fathom Ward. It uh, stretches from as far as the Dublin Road Bridge, right as far as Jonesboro, and includes areas like May, like uh, Killian, uh, like um, Newtown Clog. Wow. So it's a very wide, uh, Tony, a very wide geographical area, and it's very difficult to cover. Uh, I imagine in Newry Town, we're used to tight housing estates and uh, areas that you can fairly cover fairly quickly. There, you're down long roads, you're up uh, lanes, and you, you, you have to spend a lot of time uh, covering those areas. And I do feel, uh, as a councillor, you do have to try to, to contact as many people as possible. And it's up to me, uh, in the space of a couple of weeks that we have, to touch base with, those with the locals, with the locals, and also to tell them because a lot of them are still under the the perception that they're still part of Slave Gullion, which they were before, but they're now in fact uh, aligned with Newry, and really what Newry has become is Newry and Fathom, and it's wow. it creates another three three and a half thousand voters uh, in that particular area. And that's a big area, Davy, from the Fathom Fathom Lane to the yeah. whole way up to up to Jonesboro. Up to Jonesboro, yeah. <coughs> that takes on a lot of a lot of area and a lot of, a lot of uh, rural. A lot of rural area, yeah, which is a lot different from, from Newry, but that's, that's the way that the, the authorities have laid it. One disappointment I have with one, one guy who I taught up in the Abbey, and uh, he told me that his and his family uh, always voted in my community centre, and he's only literally half a mile, but they have changed now to vote in Newry Sports Centre, which again, unless you have a car or you have a means of transport, it's fairly difficult, maybe four or five miles to get down that road, the Dublin Road, into Newry, into the sports centre, and then go back out again. Again, I don't see the logic or the reason behind that, but that's what's happened. So there, there's a fellow who's going to have to pay to vote, mm. really. Literally, he's literally. going to have to pay to vote. Yeah. Uh, it's going I, to cost him money. I, I can't see any sense in that whatsoever. But not, not saying that he had a, a, a community centre uh, literally half a mile away from where he could have walked. To the and what, the and what he was used to, probably yeah. all, all these years. All the years, that's his vote. And he says, uh, "This is new to me." And he says, "What's the explanation for it?" And I honestly couldn't give him a, a, a real explanation for that. And the, the the new super council, Davy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the area is massive, isn't it? It, it yeah. really is. It must it's, be the biggest area in the north, is it? It's one of the biggest. It's it's <coughs> doubled in size because we now include uh, a part of Bridge and also all of Down District Council. And down includes as far as way as uh, nearly touching the Irish Peninsula, uh, includes down Patrick, includes Newcastle, um, and it's a it's a big big area. And there's a whole debate still ongoing as to where really the new council should sit. And you probably heard about it in the background that uh, there we have to renovate the existing chamber to uh, incorporate the new council. The new council will have 41 members. Our old council near Moran had 30 councils. So we have an increase of 11 councillors, 11, 11 more people have to sit. And Down have recently spent in their council area 11, pound, 11 million pounds sorry, on a new council building, hoping obviously maybe to get the headquarters based in Down. But most people, most people of any sense would say, Newry is the largest uh, geographic uh, area in uh, <coughs> the new uh, consistency. Yeah. And Newry is a city. And, uh, and, it and, lay, it's, and it's, it's pivotal t to the whole area, you know. It pivotal is, is, is sort of in the middle, really, isn't it? Yeah. So it makes sense, but down councillors, you, you probably have a better idea on the thing, but there's, go, there's going to be a lot of thrashing out, Davey, with this, mm. when this kicks off, really, isn't there? Well, what we'll have, Tony, for the first year is a shadow council. 
which means that people get to know each other, people will begin to, to understand how the system's working. There are new councillors coming in. Quite a large number of, uh, of uh, existing councillors are retiring. In Newry alone, four councillors with a lot of experience, uh, a lot of knowledge of, of how the system works, they're all going. And, and we will miss them because they all, they all had their own uh, individual traits and their own individual uh, knowledge and, and, and background and, and expertise. So those people are going. And um, we're bringing in quite a large number of new councillors. And I'm all in favour of new blood. Cause, and I can say that this will be the definitely the last council election I will fight because I don't believe really in people staying on until they're 70 or 80 or whatever age. But it's good to see new blood. But that new blood ha has to be... They have to be shown the ropes in some sense. Yeah. And uh, maybe <coughs> we uh, as, uh, as older councillors can help them on that path. Yeah. Well, as a former teacher, you know, you, I mean, you taught me at one stage. You I know, know yeah. And, uh, in the glory days of St. Joe's. The glory days, by they were some days, weren't they? Now, we didn't do a lot of homework for you, I have no, to admit, I you know, that, yeah. we were rascals, but yeah. um, we still had respect for you in them days, you know, yeah. and it, educationally wise, it's, it's sort of changed now. It's, it's, the kids are more academic, aren't they, really? Well, you, you see, like. I think with the pressure uh, of work and um, uh, how much people, how, how hard work is to come by, a lot of people have been down the academic path and, and I see no problem, I've, I've asked, tried to get my children to go their own way uh, through going to college and through university, etc. But I think there's always uh, also a need for people uh, who are able with their hands, plumbers, bricklayers, joiners, uh, say those people, we need those people. Uh, I know there's a turn, downturn in the, in the building industry, but there will it'll come again, and there will be a, a need for houses and a, a need for buildings, new buildings. Yeah. So I think people, uh, the academic path isn't the only path. Yeah. Uh, there is always a path for people who can work with their hands and who are, you know, involved in the building trade, etc. Yeah. Do you think has there been a brain drain, you know, with with, with uh, the economic situation and all the young people have left, uh, you know, America, Australia, and for, you know, Europe, different places? Uh, I think that's that's been one of the sad impact of effects of the, the the recession in this area. A large number of our, our young people have left, uh, and I, whilst many of them will come back. There will also be people who will never come back. They'll, they'll find roots in new countries. They'll find partners. They'll, they'll help start families up, etc. And then we'll lose them. Uh, and it's sad. My own son, for instance, is, has been working in Saudi Arabia for the last five years. Wow. And he, he's coming back, of course, because he's a family here and children. But that's a long time. And he himself has said that he may have to uh, work and live there for the next five years. So. Ten years out of your life and out of your children's lives is a, is a hardship. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean it's the Middle East. You know, it's a mm. it's, it's a different type of country all the time. I could do with a bit of my solar panel getting charged. <laughs> I could do with that now, Davy. You know, well, you're more than welcome to go and visit them. But <laughs> he, he's moved on to a new part of the world. It's Qatar, and I think it's a wee bit more liberal there, and he's able to enjoy the odd glass of wine and go to the cinema and do things like that. So and then that'll take the so pressure off him, you know, from, you know, because yeah. you know yourself when you're away for a while, you know, you do miss your, your hometown and that yeah, there. Yeah, of course. You know, and you miss the tastes of, you know, yeah. the, the paints and all that there. But it, it is, it's a, it's a, it's a great change to, you know, there's a rascal there, mm -hmm. Dee Rafferty's in the window, give him a making faces, so just disregard us looking about, you know. Taught Dee as well up in the other. Did you? Yes. Yeah. Very difficult pupil. Oh, they sure the Ravelry. We used to live next door to them, you know. No, back, I'm only joking. He, 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 he's him and his family are. Oh, they're all good. They're all yeah, good, 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 solid family. Fed with his father, Paul, and Nuri Shamrock's team. And they were, well, we had many, many a good a game and a good battle. And the, uh, them boys would battle, wouldn't it, to the mm. end? Paul Rafferty certainly, he's, he's a great player. Yeah, and was that the hurling or, the, or just the football? Gaelic, just the Gaelic. The Gaelic, um, yeah. But Paul also played rugby and was uh, was fairly good at that as well, you know. Yeah, and I haven't said that so Dee was a down star himself. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, he's so Just unfortunately by. his career was, was cut, cut down a wee bit, cut off of it. Yeah. But he's still got it. It's a pity his manners dropped a wee bit too, but you will talk about that later, you know, watch yourself, Robert. But it's, it's all good banter here in the studio. But I, I really do, Davy. Um, I'll tell you what, can we look at your, uh, your election pamphlets? Ah, yeah. yeah. Is that all right? We'll, we'll get a look at them. And uh, there you go. And I see you, you're, you, have, you have a bit there of Bell's Castle in the back there. Yeah, I thought that was important to highlight uh, because that area is now incorporated into Newry, that Bell's Castle, and, and uh, I haven't been up, up off and at it, Tony, before, yeah. but it's, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful uh, castle and unfortunately it's derelict at the moment, but we had a, uh, the council had a meeting with an Australian couple who had come across and who had been 
highly impressed by the whole lay of the land and the, uh, the scenes, uh, the scenic views that they had from it. They're, they're uh, hoping to spend over six million pounds in restoring the castle and to make it a state of the art. And they also hope to employ maybe up to 80 people, 85 people. So it's a hotel then? It's going to be a hotel and spa wow, with such walks and beautiful. with features like it. And we have the Steve Gullion Play Park, which has been really one of the most successful stories of the council in recent times. And what that's, going to, that's quite near to it. So that's going to allow uh, a, a hotel to be there and for people to go for meals and go for a drink or uh, and be entertained. And uh, it's, it, the two will co hopefully complement each other. Yeah. So I, I'm, that's why I put the, the article in, just to show that, uh, that that was opening up. It's something similar, I think, to Darver Castle and other places that got along the border, which, again, have been opened up and which have been used for weddings and for, for uh, events. And they have been highly successful. So I think it would be a, a magnificent feature for this area. And I wish that Australian couple all the best, because as the, the gentleman behind it said, I could easily spend my money in Australia and do various things with it. But he has roots in, this, in the Calibi area. There you and go. He wants to, to spend some of his hard-earned money there. And so the council is going to go out of their way to try to facilitate them and try to help them with planning. Yeah. Um, with their different things have to be done. New roads have to go in. Different, uh, you know, things have to be upgraded. So it's it's an exciting uh, and innovative project. So oh I, yeah, I wish well, them all the very best. With it would take a road there because uh, yeah, it's a bit narrow. We we, we were up there. We've, we've done a bit of film and another local another local man, Mark Curran. Mm. And he shot a film up here with me and my son in it, and Mark was in it too. Very good. And uh, fab the views from there, Davy, are no, they're spectacular yeah. to say the least, you know. And um, it, it's great to see somebody taking over because it's it's made of local granite and everything. Yeah. And uh, the roofs collapsed in right through the Roof, floors yeah. and everything. There's it's a lot of work to be done, like a lot of restoration, but hopefully it, it can come to pass and it'll be a, a, you know an iconic feature for the area it'll be beautiful i have to commend you on that one and you, so you're weighing in to help and um, oh yeah. yeah we we give a guarantee that we would do everything we could to, to promote the area and here's another one uh the independent voice but I love this here in the back if you can see it <laughs> somebody's done a hand drawn i'll get it up closer a hand drawing of a guy on a bicycle guess who the guy on the bicycle is <laughs> you know you because you're known as the uh, the most the Green Council man, hmm. you know, the Green Councillor of Newry. You cycle everywhere. Well, most places you cycle within reason, don't you? Well, I have to do because I don't drive. I've never driven a car in my life. Have you not? No. So I'm uh, 58 years old, 59 years old, and I, uh, my wife's always at me, said, you should learn to drive, but I'm not going to do it now. You're no point starting it. And I love the bike, and I love uh, cycling around this town, and probably people seem to be going through breaking lights and everything, but... Um, I don't do it that often. But that's what you're used to, because you, you know you're used to it. You've been on you've been on the road a long time on the bicycle. Well, a long, long time. I, I started uh, at uh, university in Manchester, and I stayed on it from that time. And I've gone through a number of bikes in, in the time. But funny, uh, just on that, you know, I think it is important. Uh, that includes a mock ballot paper, which is asking people how yeah. they might vote. But I was out in Ballinar Gardens, funny enough, uh, this morning, and I was visiting an elderly couple. Um, the man said uh, he was an elderly man now, and he said, uh, where is this girl, what part of the town is this girl Anderson from? And I says, well, there is no <laughs> girl Anderson stand. He says, well, th she's up in the posters. And I says, well, that's a, that's a European candidate. And, uh, you know, there is uh, that degree of confusion for people that two elections, two entirely different elections are being held on the same day. There's the local council election, the super council elections, and then there's the European elections. And uh, Anderson is obviously a candidate and not. But it does, you know, that man didn't realise that, and it, it's important that it, so it's highlighted, and that's why we have included a, a mock ballot paper given the names of the ten counts, uh, candidates uh, in Newry, and uh, how we'd like people to vote. Yeah. The other wee thing here in the front was this highlighting something that I think I don't people shouldn't blow their trumpets, but uh, councillors uh, are sometimes people give off about them and going and uh, junkets and things like that, but they also can get get things done. And I think people do recognise that you have a mandate when you're elected as a councillor. Um, hence, you can go. I mean, uh, one of the features here is about uh, potholes in the road behind the uh, tech. And I, I got on the road service uh, through Larry Quinn. And within 24 hours, he had put a temporary, uh, filled that hole and made sure that the, the, it wasn't a danger to pedestrians or to uh, car traffic. And also down here in this area in Carnford Park, there were problems with a. a, a a sloping uh, feature which 
was very dangerous to young children in the area. And I got in contact with the housing executive. And again, within a space of a few weeks, they said they would put a new fence in to safeguard uh, the, the lives and property of people in that area. And there you see the fence has, has been already uh, erected. Um, so and they know that is a dangerous area. Yeah, it is. You know, for, you know kids can fall off. They they fall down there, yeah. And, and there's a road nearby. And, uh, you know. Of course, yeah. And parents were rightly concerned. And they came to me because I live in that area. And I was more than happy to do it because uh, if you can get some uh, safety feature for, for a family or for families in the area, then you, you, you know it's your job. And it's good that you can do that. Yeah. I was talking to, there was another friend of mine, a filmmaker, and uh, Dion Jessie Miller, she's a great girl, she's, uh, she came over from Bracknell o o over a year ago and now she's living here and she's making films, she's busy, and, mm. but she's very passionate against this anti-fracking that's going on in, in England, you know, yeah. and I think they're going to start it here in Fermanagh, as Fermanagh, far as yeah. I know. Now, to me, I've read up about it, it's, it's, it's highly dangerous what they're out there uh, drilling way down into the, you know, into the earth, and then they're, they're pumping out chemicals which lift gas. Now, if you, if you can check it out and see what happened in America, this gas is coming out through people's water taps, and you know, it, it disturbs the water table and all. So, I don't know, uh, yeah, do you know anything I, about not, the fracking? I'm not authority on it, but I do know it's a major issue in uh, Fermanagh. And I know that there's at least a couple of candidates or independent candidates who are, sit, who are standing specifically on the anti-fracking issues. And I think there are large question marks about it. Yeah. And they need to be investigated because people's health is paramount. And if there's going to be dangers as a result of the, of the fracking measures yeah. undertaken, then we need to know about them and we need to, uh, to make people aware of them. And these are hidden dangers that mm. nobody sees. You can't see or smell. You know, yeah. I think they can smell... You know, it's coming. Some people in America are turning on their taps, mm. and there's the, the water's green and all sorts yeah, of colours. It doesn't so, sound good. Like. Well, we don't want fracking here. So, we're, we're th thanks for your views on that, by the way. You know, we didn't want to put you on the spot there, You're but right. uh, Dion, Dion, Jesse, there's there's uh, Davy's views on that. But we're Tell gonna, Dion, I'm, I'm backing her 100. percent There you go, Dion. This councillor here is going to back you 100 percent. This is this is this is the way you operate, Davy, isn't it? Yeah, but you you, you have to be proactive. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, if you put yourself forward as a councillor and you say, oh, well, that's me elected. I knew a, a person once, and not go into names, yeah. but she wouldn't give her, uh, release her phone number to the public. And she found it mad that I give out cards which had my name clearly on it, and which said that uh, I could be contacted at any time. If you're going to be a councillor or represent the people, then surely people have the right to contact you, and they must know what your telephone number is, or they must know where you live, or they must know that you're available for meetings, etc. Yeah. That idea of that, oh, I, I'm uh, uh, away from the public and I'm oh. out of, you know... To me, eye. that's looking down the nose yeah. at the people, you know. And, and some politicians, unfortunately, do that. that especially ones who, who, who get into fairly elevated positions, maybe as ministers or whatever, and think then... And I think some of them do definitely lose contact with the, with the base. The old saying was, give a man stripes and it'll go to his head. Yeah. And, you know, that's still evident, isn't that, it? That's, that's unfortunately true. Yeah. So... It, it, so you're a man for the people, Davy, mm. and oh. uh, I have to say, you know, and I do, I do thank you for coming in. Um, I tried to get you in a couple of weeks ago, and I think you're out electioneering. Mm. How's the electioneering going for you? It's, I said it's, it's a much wider area, and because I'm an independent, it means that I don't have the resources that the, the, the big parties have. You have to raise all the money for yourself. You have to buy your own posters, buy your own literature, etc. And then you rely on people. If you try to do it just as a one-man or two-man show, it's going to be extremely difficult. But I, I have a, 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 maybe between 20 and 30 people who, who are willing to come out, give up of their time voluntarily, uh, go to people's doors, knock uh, them, uh, put leaflets in, and put posters up. And they're, they're a credit. And they're brilliant. And they don't get a penny for it. And uh, without their support, I, I'd be lost. And as a result of that, we have produced one new sheet, we have distributed over 8,000 of them. We're on now to the second new sheet and we'll distribute another 8,000 of those in the next two weeks. And hopefully it'll have people to read it and maybe agree with some of the sentiments that I have in it. But I say, uh, I'm really proud of that election team. They were there three years ago for me when I came back into local uh, politics. They helped me get elected then. And, and uh, I say, I'm indebted to them, and especially indebted to my own family, to my wife and to my daughter. For they have been a, a sterling service to him as well. You must be up. You're, you're, can you give me a rough, a rough idea of a Davy Highland day? You know, from what time do you get up in the morning to what time your phone stops ringing at night? Mm. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure it's a hectic enough. 
Well, the lifestyle, day, is it, Davy? The day uh, I had to do a number of things, I had, I had to call the council office, the, the phone people up to, to get in contact with a printer in uh, Lurgan. I had given commitments to visit people in the Meta. I went down to visit them at 11 o'clock. I then went down to a printer in, uh, in Greenbank, Clannery Press. Again, they were a great help to me uh, to f finalise the, the final voice or paper. Um, um, back in the house at 3 o'clock, a couple of phone messages. I'm going to go back after this meeting to the council to do a bit more work. And then at quarter past six at night, I want to go out to the refrain road, do about an hour of canvassing, and then I'm going to go out and watch my daughter play a Gaelic football match in Savile. Oh, good I'm girl. Going get, I'm going to get a wee bit of light relief. I'm going to watch her tonight. Yeah, that'll just take your, your head away from yeah. everything. Because sometimes you need a wee break from it all. It could, could put your head away a wee bit, you know. Yeah, and I'm, you know... It's very uh, strenuous. How long would it take you to get from one end of Hill Street to the other? On a normal day, roughly, because I'm you, sure you, you do. You generally meet three or four people with different issues or concerns. But it's a brilliant way of seeing people and, and having uh, a contact with them. Uh, and some of them are quite serious. Only yesterday I, ha I had a conversation with a gentleman whose son is unfortunately in jail, and he believes that there's been a, a, a miscarriage of justice committed wow. against his son. And it's a serious case. It's not a, a, it's not a case of uh, shoplifting or not paying uh, taxes or something like that. It's yeah. a very serious case. And the man is obviously very, very unhappy about what, what has happened to his son. It's nothing to do with the troubles. It's, yeah. it's just a, a straightforward enough case, but it's got... Uh, severe implications for him and his family and obviously for his son. So, I mean, I, I spent a good tw 20 minutes to half an hour with that man because I had to listen to what he had to say. Of and course. I, I, again, I'll be trying to help him as much as I can uh, in the intervening period. But, I mean, we, we're not... We, there's certain times only so much we can do. There's limitations yeah. as to what yeah. we can do. So, we, you know, and I told him that. It says his best advice was to get good legal advice uh, and good independent uh, advice. So I'll try to give that for him. But yeah. It, it says it was fairly. I thought about it last night, and uh, I wouldn't like to go through uh, what he's gone through. It, 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 does, it doesn't even bear thinking about, no, you know, because no. uh, if, if things like that go wrong, well, mm. it, it takes a long time to try and ratify that one. Yeah, well, well the, the son has been in jail for some time now. So. My goodness, my goodness. So, so that's just, that's just a, a, a slight sample of your daily mm. routine then? It wouldn't all be as serious as that. No. But everybody's problem, uh, Tony, is their problem, and it's a major problem. And whilst we may say, oh, it's, it's not terribly, something that gets terribly worried about, for them, for individuals and for families, it is pr a problem. And we as councillors, using whatever uh, contacts we have, and you do over a period of time, you build up good contacts with various agencies, with state agencies and that, with the housing exactly, with, yeah. uh, with the dole, uh, with uh, tax offices and people like that. And you can use those contacts then to, to help people. And I think that that's one of our, our, our centre roles, is to have a one-to-one -one service with people and to, to give them as much advice and help as possible. Yeah, and I've no doubt, well, you, you know, you are, a, I know you work hard because mm. um, I see you, see you cycling home there some nights, nine o'clock, in the mm. rain. No. You know, <laughs> when, when, you know, other counters are cruising about and big uh, Audis and all. Yeah. But fair play to you, you know, and I have to commend you on that. Um, I appreciate them. But um, do you see, what about, what about, Newry has changed now, mm. you know, and as you know, we've got, um, We've got different communities. We've got, sure. you know, all these foreign communities, and, and I, I completely embrace them, you know, yeah. because it's. I think it's made nearly a better place. You know, mm. it's more cosmopolitan, if you like, you know, or European, or whatever way you want to describe it. But you, you now have to deal with these people as well. You know, I'm sure you support not just not just local people, but you support all communities. Then, of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, the strange thing about Newry is that for so long we've had people who've had forced to emigrate from from the area. But because of our relative success in recent times, we've had especially European people coming into it. It's different in the dog. It's, it's a different type of group of people who have moved in there. But that's that's the way. That's I think the way 21st century is going to be. People are going to migrate. People are going to move much more than they did so in the past. And I think it's it's up for us to provide a, a welcome for these people and, and to embrace them. Because just as we were embraced in other countries throughout the world, yeah. in Australia and America, throughout Europe. It does, uh, and there's no button denying it, it does create difficulties because uh, there's pressures on the health service, there's pressures on the education service as well of the influx of people. And I, I've just gone through some of the, of the electoral registers and the number of uh, new people coming in, the, 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 the new nationals as I would call them, they have, there's a sizable amount of, of people, you know, 
And I would say they're in the One Point Road cycling there. You would see uh, people who you know are, are not from Newry, but who are working in the, the meat factory, etc. So they've also, I mean, they're you're beginning to get, uh, I teach out in the Abbey uh, Grammar School, and you'd get quite a number of kids from, uh, and you know this from their surnames and from, the, from their first names, but they now have Newry accents because they are part of the yeah. Newry scene. And I think that's the way it's going to go in the future. Some of these people will mm. obviously go back to their native lands, to Lithuania, to Poland, to wherever, Bulgaria, etc. But quite a number of them, I think, will stay in Uri. Yeah, and they'll I settle now. They'll settle. It. Yeah. And, I mean, I've, I've talked to a couple of uh, girls who work down in uh, Murphy's uh, on the Warren Point Road, the, the fuel place, and uh, they talk about their Irish children, you know, because the children are born here. Born here, yeah. But they have, uh, obviously, they have still got, I mean, they're brought up, say, speaking the Polish language, but they go to school and then they, they have the English with them. So they're, they're, they're bilingual, you know. And uh, it's, it poses challenges, there's no doubt about mm. that. But it also provides, I think, something that's, very, as you mentioned, very cosmopolitan, something very uh, useful for the future. Yeah. But uh, I, uh, the wee thing, just on a later note, I, I love to hear, you know, uh, some of the foreign nationals going, I have a wee seat there, you know, or <laughs> you know, I, it's not a bad old day, you know. Yeah. And you hear all the local lingo coming out. They're, pack, and, they're just picking those phrases up and, and you know. And they've yeah. got to know them, you know, and they just bounce off. How are you doing? I'm not so bad, you know. Same down there in Newry Market. Yeah. You'd hear lads from, obviously, from India, from the subcontinent of, of India or Pakistan. Yeah. And they've got these broad Belfast accents and they're bantering away with each other. It is a strange thing to hear. And you see it also in, are here in Glasgow and places like that. It's just, that's the way, the that's, wor that's way the, of the world. The way of the world, that's yeah. the way of the world. That's the way it's going. And, um, so you're, you're kept busy, Davey, and um, you're, you're up for this new Super Council, mm. and there's another 11 seats to be filled yet, you know, for the new Super Council. That's even going to, that's more challenges then again for you, isn't it? Well, especially so, given that the new councils will have increased powers. There'll be powers over planning, there's powers to raise monies, there's powers to be more economically active. Uh, and I don't know how well we've been taught to take on these new powers or, or given advice on, uh, on it, but it certainly is a challenge. Um, you know, I think most of the councillors are up for it. Uh, the, although more powers does mean maybe more responsibilities, uh, you do have to buckle down. You do have to uh, you know, become more uh, educated in yourself as to yeah. how, how you, you, you do have planning issues and things like that. And planning issues w w was never a really big issue for me because I was represented Newry, but I know certainly for rural councillors, I mean, a lot of their time is taken up with planning applications and with trying to get people to get new sites for buildings and houses, etc. So um, it's something that, that it's going to be uh, in the, the power to be of, of the new councillors and it's up to them now to try to buckle down and, and to, to... Yeah. And back in the day, it, yeah. back in the day, all the planning had to go through Marlborough House and Craig Alvin for this yeah, area, yeah. Mm. and it took a year minimum, mm. and it was a complete disaster, you yeah. know. So now, now the councillors are taking control of it They're again. control of it. That makes a lot of sense, Davy, doesn't yeah. it? Well, you know, it does because they they have a lot of local uh, knowledge and, and influence as well, you know. Uh, as long as they don't misuse it, I mean, the start of the civil rights campaign here was over housing and the allocation of housing, how it was gerrymandered and how it was uh, handled very badly. Uh, by the government at that time. Uh, I wouldn't like to see local councillors uh, you know, misuse their powers in any way or, or sort of, be, be, you know, with, you often hear of the scenario of, of the, the brown envelope and things like that. Oh, uh, if I can get this done for you, well, maybe I'll, I'll throw you a few pounds for it. Mm -hmm. I think that is a very dangerous road for anybody to go down. I yeah. don't know how much truth in it. I know I've never received any brown envelopes, but I know there is a theory uh, out there that uh, if you can do a, a favour for somebody in some sort of way that you'd be rewarded with, that would be completely against my understanding of what a council should be. And if, that, if you got engaged in that type of activity, then uh, you're not worthy of the name. You're not, not, you're not for the people then, are you? No. Well, you're you there for certain people, obviously. You you're for yourself. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a selfish act that you're not going to be involved in then. But no, it you. seems to have happened in the past, but hopefully yeah. it won't be a, a, a something that we'll have in the future. Yeah, but when, when you think of the past, Davey, when you think of maybe 10, 15 years ago, what, you know, there was very little to do in or about now that, you know, the, well, the sports centre, there's a new, mm. a new swimming pool getting opened up over here. Newry's expanding big time, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I say it's only when you, you start travelling to some of the new estates, like on the Refrain Road and on the Armagh Road, that you're really aware of the number of people that there are in Newry and the no number of people who are working, uh, thank God. 
Uh, we do have still too high unemployment, but 90% of our people are probably working. And uh, it's great that that's the case, that, the, yeah. that people aren't relying uh, solely on state benefits or, or you know, sickness monies. I know some people are, and yeah. that's, that's, that's to be, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's a sad feature of life, but the majority of our people are working on and it seems in well-paid jobs because some of the some of the houses around Uri are are really <laughs> something to be. There's a few, there's, there's a few. I'm waiting for the the Orange County house waves, of, <laughs> you know, or something to come in and start up. Uh, well, it's, it's good to see progress, and yeah, uh, you know, it's yeah. uh, um, so uh, geographically speaking, you're you're away at uh, the Refrain Road now, and you've probably seen a state you've never even heard of I before. Didn't even uh, there's something up there at the top end of the Refrain Road that I didn't even know existed. But I, I tell you, at the end of uh, of going through them. My legs were sore enough because <laughs> there's plenty of hills around your and plenty of steps to get up. But it does one thing that keeps you fit. It keeps you. Uh, it keeps you. It keeps the weight off. Yeah, well, that, that's one thing. This this is one of the fittest councillors in Europe. <laughs> I have to say that there. And um, I think Big O gave you a quip years ago. Wasn't it on your bike? He said years ago. And you know, but so it, you know, everybody knows. You know, anybody that knows this man knows. He, he doesn't he doesn't be getting paid by the mile because he's on his own basically you know yeah, basically right. aren't you yeah what about the zero coming to it davy i think that's going to be a, a magnificent event for it this wee bit disappointed didn't come through nuri itself yeah it sort of bypasses goes out by Blakes and by uh, mountain house mountain house but i think there's going to be uh, thousands upon thousands and it's going to get this area a wee bit of recognition yeah and it's also it's, it's encouraging uh the cycling, which I think is a fantastic phenomenon. I mean, every year I would sit down and watch the Tour of France, and this year I'm going to take a healthy interest in this, and I hope to be out now on Sunday, uh, helping uh, with with the yeah the logistics of the whole oh, very exercise. Very good, oh good, good, and even even the uh, the. The cycle to work scheme, it's, it's still going too. It's still going, I suppose yeah. you're trying to promote it too, are you? Well, I think, yeah, it's good to see all the bike shops in the town are involved in it, and uh, more and more people are using I mean, we have a, a fantastic feature that's only been recently came to light. It's linking up with um, the cycling lane that's coming from Greenore to O'Meath, and it's already in progress and it's gone through Carnford and it's coming up along the lock side. Uh, the council uh, often criticised, but in this case, I think, should be praised. Uh, they have built, um, are in the process of clearing the middle bank between the Clanray River and the canal and going to use it as a cycle path and footpath to link uh, with that area of the Albert Basin down to the lock gates and then hopefully they'll have another passageway down t towards O'Meath. And link so in with the, 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 the O'Meath side of it. That would be terrific. So it's, a, it's going to be a cross-border venture and, uh, uh, and something that but everybody knows that the towpath out the Armagh Road, Lincoln, uh, Newry to Portadown, is one of the best features, again, that we have in this area. It's great for walking, it's great for cycling on, it's great for kids. And if we can have the similar uh, exercise on the other side, uh, and linking up the side with Carnford, um, with the Green Ore area, it's going to be brilliant. Yeah, um, at a guy in earlier on, Neil Bradley. Especially, um, you know, it's safe. Too, you know. Yeah, oh, that 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 there would be lovely, and you're, you're out in the fresh air. You're in between the river well, and the canal. Says, or I, you're, you're, like, what where else would you get a feature that has on one side of you a river and the other side a canal? It's a unique feature, you know. Very something unique. That, something that can be developed. Very unique, and uh, there's a you start mentioning cycling and, and, and beautiful features, out. and then the sun comes out and blinds us. Mm. The two of us are sitting here blinded, you know. But um, the day the light. <laughs> Plain to pay the light is right. But um, I, had a, I had a guy from Newry 2020 in here earlier on, and they, they've got a vision for the year 2020 in Newry, mm. and they're on about um, the, the middle bank, where, it, you know, I was saying to them that the, 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 the Malagy Maguire's old buildings are now yeah, demolished, yeah. and, yeah. you know, so he's on about they're going to try and get that turned into a park, and they're meeting with council and all. What, what's your views on that, you know? But I, I, that was one of the disappointments I had before I came back to the council was that the area of the Albert Basin, which maybe could be called something else, but uh, that it could be developed or should be developed. It's lying idle at the minute. Uh, they used for the fun for maybe two or three occasions of the year. Yeah. But we walked it uh, recently, and there's a massive amount of land there, and it should be developed. You know, and uh, the idea is that those 2020 people have, which again is only six years away f from now. Yeah. They they have to be looked at and they have to and I, I really encourage people to have a, a belief and a pride in, in their own locality, their own town, their own city, and that's what those people are doing. They're, yeah. they're developing the pride for that site, and it should be developed. There were plans I know by um, 
by groups to develop in different ways, but that hasn't come to pass. And I think the, the longer it lays idle, uh, you know, the, the worst looking the for Newry. You yeah, know, they've, they've got the be good. Good, beautiful big caves yeah. building. They've got the lovely walkway. The whole. They've got the boats mm. on the basin. And yes. then you look over in a derelict and derelict on the other side. You, you yeah. know, you've got railway sleepers and hedge beams. Mm. Uh, doesn't enhance the area at all, you know. But the count, it's on the council's pitch. Yeah. Um, what an asset! Yeah. And I think it's near enough 15 acres or something yeah. that Neil was telling me earlier on. So it's a fantastic asset, and it's really sh it should be developed. And I think when the new council comes into being, that that should be one of its top priorities. Yeah. To try to make sure that p people and the public like have a say in what goes on in there and what's developed, but to leave it lying there, as you say, idle and uh, of no use, then it doesn't make sense. And we really do have to, to get down, to think, get our heads together and develop it for the betterment of all the people and yeah. for future generations. Yeah, that's that's what it's all about, really, isn't it? Le leaving a, a legacy for behind. And yeah. you know, because you know what Nuri was like, say, 30 years ago. Mm. It was a bombed out wreck. Yeah. You know, and I'd be trying even to tell my children, they'd be looking at me, what? Mm. They don't believe it. So you'd have to get on the, the web and show them for Show them what it's like, yeah. And they're sitting there gobsmacked, you know. And, yeah. you know, uh, them days are over and it's like progress and keep it going and try and brighten up the area, you know, really, yep. isn't it? And as you say, leave it, leave it better for our children, you know, and it's their children's children, you know. Sure. Because we have a fantastic city, you know, and the city centre is gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, but you're all for it anyway, Davey, really, aren't you? Definitely, and uh, so that's one of our roles as local representatives and local councillors is to put our heads together and come up collectively with plans and proposals for it. Sometimes I, I do believe that we give our, our officers, our, we do have hard working officers and officials up in the council, but we are the people with the, the mandate, we're the people who are voted in. It's up to us to really to get our heads together and come up with new initiatives and new plans and strategies and put it down, down to our permanent officials, our civil servants up there. That's what we want for, for the future for this area. Yeah. And we, we'd like to see it develop. And, you know, we've been waiting for that new swimming pool for some time. It, it's making great progress at the minute, but it, it's long overdue. Yeah. The, the, the old swimming pool was well past its sell by date, and we need to get a, uh, that new one up and running because some of our competitors, and it is a competitive market, places like Lisbon, places like Mundock, they're ahead of the, of the policy, so to speak, at the minute. So it's time for us in Uri to catch up. Yeah. Catch up. Have it's you seen, the the sorry to break your word, have you seen the, pl the plans for the new pool? Or yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be. It, is it going to equal Lisbon or yeah, even a tad be, better, is it? Yeah, it's, it's something similar. Um, we're going to have plans also for a dry uh, centre, leisure centre, that the one in, uh, the existing one will be closed down eventually and will move to the, that site. And I mean that uh, both complexes, both the swimming and the, the leisure centre, will be both there together. And, uh, you know, we have a new entrance to it through Cecil Street which will oh. alleviate some of the parking problems that we have over the meta. Um, makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. And, and I, I'm really optimistic about the whole lot, and I think that it's, it'll be a great asset for this town and this city in the next uh, couple of and you never know what decades. You never know what sporting superstars are going to come yeah, in Newry. Well, you know. Newry has a rich legacy in that regard. Yeah. And why, why not? We've always had uh, great footballers. We've always had great um, boxers, um, great... Uh, Cyclists, a whole lot. I mean, we, we, we have a, a, a healthy uh, legacy which to look at, and why not encourage it? I mean, the number of boxing clubs and all around the town that you have, and them all trying to, to make progress and all getting kids through the All Ireland Finals, etc. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah, and it fair is. play to those people who do it again, entirely voluntary basis, uh, get very little uh, kudos for it, uh, very f no monetary rewards whatsoever, and yet every night of the week uh, they're out there helping people. Hail, rain or snow, they're out there and they're bothering away. And you, mm. you do have to commend them people, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, as I was saying to Neil earlier on, it was great to see the likes of Bootsy Fern taking the, the triathlon swimmers down into the canal and oh then wow. the council put a bit of staging yeah. so they can get in and out safely. And, and make an event out of it. And, and it's great to see that, you know, the, it's great to see the canal been used, the basin been used for... Uh, for water sports, yeah, you know, and it really is. It, it was used, obviously, f uh, in the past for for industrial reasons, for commercial Shipping, reasons, yeah. and, and that. Uh, but but that has gone, and we're on to something else. But for the and it did lie derelict for for too long, and now, as you say, it's it's used for, for very positive and very hopeful things for the future. And long may that continue. So onwards and upwards. Onwards and upwards. Onwards and upwards. So, Davy, have you any message that uh, you want to give any of your potential voters or? Uh, 
before we get the big time out from our studio manager. He's yeah. giving me, she's giving me the A there every now and again. You know, no, it's just, the people do have an opportunity on the twenty second, in two weeks' time today, to go out and cast a vote. There's something like eighteen thousand people in, in Newry will have the, that opportunity. Now, the last election, the vote went down quite a bit, down to, for Newry for fifty six percent of the, which means forty four percent of people didn't vote. I think uh, the vote was hard won by, you know, and uh, I would encourage as many people, you don't have to vote for me, but you can vote for any of the candidates who are running. I think all the candidates are good candidates, and we, we need people to come out and vote in large numbers to give the new council a mandate and to give the new councillors a mandate also. Uh, on my own behalf, uh, anybody who comes to my door, anybody who rings me, I will never turn them away. I'll do my best. And you're talking about anybody? Them. Anybody. Protestant, Celtic, dissenter. There you go. I will go uh, represent them as best I can. There you go. You can't say it further than that. So, mm. definitely, Davy. And I say it, thank you very much for coming in the studio. Yeah, it's been a, a pleasure. You know, at a difficult time, this is extremely busy for you. You know, yeah. and um, there's a few more councillors going to come in and get them in. Come in. I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Like Davy, there, Davy. I really appreciate you coming yeah, in. Gentlemen, no and uh, it's always a pleasure to have you in the studio. And as I say, this man's working for everybody. Not just one section or, or you know of the community. This man works for everybody. He's out on the ground. You know he's he's not cruising around in a big big flush motor. Yeah, he's on two him. wheels and there's no petrol even going into them two <laughs> wheels. You know what I'm saying? To you? Green power. Green power. The greenest counter in in Newry and Morn. And I have to say, Davy, I wish you well. Thanks again. I for wish you well. And this man's available to represent anybody that comes to his door or anybody gives him a call. So that's that's a very positive thing, Davey. You know? And I appreciate the time to me for to express my views here today. Absolutely. As I say, Davey, you're always welcome in the studio. So friends, it's been interesting. Enjoyed the crack here with, with my main man, Davey, here. And uh, don't worry, we're going to get more counsellors in. We want them from all angles, all parties. Come in here, have the banter with me and see what goes down. But from me and Davey at the minute, we're out of here. Give us a wee razor there, Davey. Razor. Ha <laughs> ha.